welcome to the NFT Meta Jungle. I am Emma, aka Nifty Meta Girl. I am bringing you another episode of our video podcast here. In today's episode, I'm really excited to be presenting a gallery event that is going to be the first in real life Meta Jungle event. And we are partnering with Super Chief to present this in Venice, Italy. And so I'll tell you a little bit more about the exhibit. And then I'm going to be featuring eight of the artists um, that are going to be exhibited. And this is going to be an ongoing series um, because we actually are going to have a 12-part series for this particular um, exhibit so we can really be able to feature all the artists that are going to be exhibited throughout this month. Um, So this was an opportunity that came to Meta Jungle with Super Chief. And for those that are not as familiar with Super Chief, they are actually an in real life gallery based in New York. They also have a physical location in LA, um, but they also work with other gallery spaces across Um, the world to be able to present both um, artists that are creating um, traditional art and now they have really branched out into the NFT space as well. And so if you're active in NFT Twitter, you see a lot of times where they're featuring artists that may be showing on on billboards at one of their um, physical locations, either in New York or LA. They have um, influence in Tokyo and London, which is fantastic. Um, And then we actually were introduced to them um, and have the opportunity to um, exhibit through the this exhibit happening in Venice. And so for the month of November, um, we have a, a space in a gallery that's going to have eight screens presenting um, a six minute video that's going to be on loop. So um, I worked with Alpha Trilogy on curating this particular collection and it was really important to us. We had a few goals as we were um, creating this curation. Of course, we and it's going to be represented representing photography in Web3. So that's the that's the main goal. That was what we wanted to really highlight in this exhibit. Um, but it was also, we also had a few other goals that were really important to us. Um, we wanted to have a wide variety of genres represented and also a wide variety of artists. And so to accomplish that, we really dove in to the Alpha Trilogy vault. These are all um, featured photos of that Alpha Trilogy has collected over the last year. And we also wanted to really highlight um, artists that may be really well known in the traditional art world and those that are working on building their career and really active in the NFT space. And so throughout this presentation, you'll see um, artists that um, you may recognize in the photography world and those that also are quite impressive and are building um, their careers currently. Um, So we really have worked hard to um, pair those artists and be able to display them in the same um, exhibit. We also worked really hard on being able to um, highlight a wide variety of genres. And so we've created through the six minutes, there'll be 12 different scenes that change throughout and each one represent, um, have a different genre. They're organized by genres of photography. And we do have a few genres that there was so many wonderful options to choose from. We actually are, um, have multiple slides that have that particular genre. Um, But all in all, we're going going to be featuring documentary, portrait, landscape, street, fashion editorial photography, travel lifestyle photography, abstract and aerial, wildlife, and we have a great slide that features what we've rounded up as transport photography. Um, So we also have overall are highlighting 98 photographers, I'm sorry, 98 photos, 90 photographers, nine different genres, and all of this is going to be displayed in a six minute loop. Um, And so we've put a lot of time and attention to this. And again, I'm super excited to be able to exhibit, to talk to you about the pieces that are going to be within in the exhibit. Um, and so to jump right in, the fir- um, uh, today I'm going to be talking about our um, slide that is going to be highlighting documentary photography. So again, we wanted to really think about um, that particular genre and voices that may be really speaking out. Um, and it is a type of photography that um, 
Alpha Trilogy and I both are really drawn to storytelling photography. And it's interesting because several of the photographers that are um, represented in this particular part of the collection, they do describe themselves as storytellers. And so I think that he and I both connect to um, docu documentary photography. And there's also so many opportunities um, to be able to connect with artists and different events that are happening across the world, being active in the NFT space. Um, so it's really interesting that um, that's one thing I'm thankful for. I believe we are able to connect with artists and really um, have kind of an intimate view of many um, things that are happening across the world that just being within our normal bubble may miss out on. Um, and the first collection that I want to talk about and artists that I want to talk about really fits that role. Um, Riza Jean Kumis is a documentary photographer. Um, if you check out his Twitter handle or his Twitter profile, he will actually, you'll see in his bio that he describes himself as a storyteller. And Riza Jean is a great voice in the space um, and he is known for um, really delving in. He, he plans trips and really goes off grid and really when he picks a location, he does a lot of research and he really puts a lot of efforts into going to a space that he is um, interested in and really immersing himself in the culture. Um, we've, we do have um, some podcasts that we've done with him as far as interviews and other interactions um, that he's that we've had within our Meta Jungle community. So there are some several opportunities to get to learn more about Riza Jean if you check out um, some of our previous episodes. Um, but this particular piece. Um, that we have chosen for this display is from his um, collection that he introduced in January of 2022, and it's called I Put a Spell on You. Um, one thing I love about what Reza Jean does is he, um, when he goes on location, he brings, he really thinks through the whole process and brings a crew with him, and he creates these amazing behind the scene videos and has all kinds of, of um, different ways of documenting his trip, and you really do feel like you're along with him, and he goes to these really amazing locations um, that really captivates you. And he has such a love for the storytelling. He really brings that back with him. And you can see that displayed within the descriptions and really the way in which he presents the beautiful artwork that he creates. Um, this particular photo um, is titled A Winian. And in the description, we find that this is a young voodoo priest um, at the Aquasaya Fetish Market in Laom, the capital of Toga. And many of these are taken um, in the area of Toga um, Benin and parts of Ghana and Nigeria. And this whole collection is really about the fascination of voodoo as an ancient religion and um, to really also highlight how um, it's very complex and it has a wide geographic reach. Um, so this belief is also viewed as an actual official religion. And um, this particular collection is really, really interesting. The pieces throughout are really incredible. You can tell um, Riza Jean's fascination with with this whole culture um, because of the photos that he actually captures, um, the time that he spends with the different tribes people and the different um, perspectives that he is actually able to capture. But love this piece, the way that the lion is drawn on the wall behind this young priest um, and just the conviction in his face. But it's a beautiful piece and a great way to introduce our documentary collection um, that will be shown in this exhibit. Um, the next piece um, that will be displayed is by another um, photographer who um, is very um, interested in a culture that is located in Nigeria. And his name is Peter Hugo. And this, um, this particular collection is called The Hyena and Other Men. This work was captured between 2005 and 2007. And it's a portrait series about a community of hyena men who together form a community around an ownership of exotic animals, predominantly hyenas, but pythons, monkeys, and other animals as well. And it is just absolutely amazing. The photos that Peter was able to capture and highlight within this series, there's 38 total photos. Um, and this was a collection that was actually brought into the NFT space through Fellowship Trust. And it's um, it's actually, it's just amazing the story that um, Peter was able to capture, but also it's such a um, 
question about dominance and submission and how they really relate in these masculine ideas. And as you look through the photos, it's just crazy that you see these animals that are known to be very, very vicious. Um, however, with this particular group of men, they have created this relationship where they are oftentimes dressed in human clothes or they're on leashes, just like d domesticated dogs or pythons that are wrapped around little babies. Um, um, and so moments that would be terrifying, but in this particular setting, um, they feel like there is quite the control there and also a tight knit community amongst the animals and the men. Um, so the two pieces that are going to be included in this collection are um, Malayam Materi Lalmal with Manasara from 2005 and Deyabo Yusman and the Monkey Clear. Abjua from Nigeria in 2005. Both are just absolutely captivating images. I'm really excited to be able to highlight these particular pieces and love that Alpha Trilogy actually added these to his collection, to his vault. Um, and as you can tell, um, again, the animals that are, are riding around on vehicles and clothing, but also um, the, the muzzles that are on the hyenas and the huge chains that are still um, used as leashes to be able to um, have these these animals around people is so fascinating. Um, we actually listened to a, an interview with Peter that um, Fellowship Trust pre presented, and he said oftentimes these men will walk into stores with hyenas, and they end up involving them into their culture as a way of actually creating a revenue source because they'll either be in town squares where people are paying them to see the animals, but also will walk into these stores in town centers and the um, parishioners are actually scared enough that they'll pay them to leave. Um, so just such a, an amazingly fascinating group of people um, and a great interview to check out also um, if you have the chance to listen to it. Um, but a great body of work by Peter and really happy to highlight this within this particular exhibit. Um, the next um, piece that we are going to be highlighting is by a young photographer named Onar Kabi. And Onar Kabi is an active Meta Jungle member. Um, Kabi is a really great person. We've gotten to know him quite well over the last few months, and he is very fascinated about different cultures. Um, in a previous collection update, um, you'll the, uh, from both myself and Boss Mom and Alpha Trilogy, we have collected from his Venice collection, which was a really cool collection. And he's gone on to really be work hard on telling the stories of people that aren't able to maybe tell stories of their own. Um, and this particular collection is one that when you see it, it just stays with you. It's a, it's a powerful, powerful story. Um, and again, this is um, a belief and a, and part of a voodoo concept that come, that is, that is believed in a wide reaching part of the world. But this particular um, collection is focused a lot in Tanzania, and um, it's about a form of witchcraft. And it's a way that they actually persecute people, um, specifically albino people in this area. Um, this form of witchcraft actually has a belief that the parts of a albino person have medicinal or magical powers. So oftentimes this group of people are hunted, tracked down, maimed, have parts of their body amputated or killed because of this um, ideal that they're that by using their body parts, it's going to help people heal or be able to become better people or be able to advance in their, their daily lives, which is just a horrific belief. Um, and this, again, this collection is one that when you see it and you hear the stories, it's just so, it, it just moves you and it documents something that is just so hard for some of us to believe really takes place. Um, it is such a, an important message to be able to actually let people know that this goes on. And um, part of Cabby's storytelling purpose of telling this story is to bring recognition to this area. There's groups that are trying to wave, raise awareness and funds to be able to put an end to this type of persecution. Um, and many of these images you can see are children that um, are kind of kept in a, in a captive area to be able to protect them. Um, but this particular piece, um, I know Alpha Trilogy has said, is one of the most moving and disturbing images Images he owns out of his entire collection of thousands of photos. And I think that is just because, you know, you see these two young men sitting side
side by side that there's really nothing different about them, but they're perceived so differently by their by their community, by people outside of their community. And also the, the challenges that one faces just because of the color of his skin is just so overwhelming. Um, it really is a thoughtful, thoughtful um, collection and one that I'm, um, I believe will be highly appreciated um, as being as being included in this particular collection. But um, definitely one that comes to mind when we're speaking of documentary photography, this white potion collection is one um, that is definitely at the top of the list. Um, the next piece is um, by Christina de Middle, and she is actually the sitting president of Magnum, which is a photography um, organization that is really renowned of having of having members that are the top photographers in the world. Um, it's a, a society that was established decades ago, um, and its membership is regularly revered as the top photographers in the world. So exciting that um, Christina has entered into the NFT space um, and her influence, but also her understanding, I believe, of NFTs and smart contracts is going to really help um, onboard other artists and really um, understand some of the elements that make it so important for photography. So very happy to have her involved in the NFT space, one, because of her photography, but also because of her voice and her reach. Um, and the piece that we have we have included in this particular series is called Cued, and it's from the series uh, that Christina created called This Is What Hatred Did. And this particular series is such amazing storytelling. Um, it's really, really captivating. This particular image, I absolutely love how the colors of both the both subjects within the piece, how they correlate with one another. And it's just a stunning photo. But then the storytelling behind it is mesmerizing as well. And in the description, I'll read what the description of the photo says because I think it um, speaks more better than I could actually about the collection. Um, but this is Christina's words and says, this is what hatred did is a lapsidary phrase that ends Amos Tatula's novel of my life in the bush of ghosts. When it was published in 1954, the novel provoked such a violent reaction to the hidden critique that it carried to the government that Tatula was obligated to leave Nigeria. Its concluding phrase is the starting point of my own interpretation of the tenebrous story based in the streets of Meikoko, a watery slum in the city of Lagos. This work is minted in collaboration with the Fellowship Trust. All carbon emissions from minting of these pieces have been offset via several initiatives supported by the Trust. Um, but it is, again, just a beautiful series. I absolutely am spellbound by the narrative that Christina is able to capture within this collection. And uh, it's definitely a moving series of photos that I encourage everyone to um, to research and check out. Um, but this particular piece um, definitely stands out. So very glad that we're able to highlight that within this particular exhibit. Um, the next piece that we are including in this particular um, section um, in the documentary section is created by Anna Marie Alvaro Gosen and um, she is and it is titled Guatemala 11. Um, this particular um, image represents a, a young man that is holding a gun as you can tell and um, in the description it says this is Eric he's 20 years old and he poses for a, portra a portrait in San Miguel El Tejiro in Guatemala on March 17th 2022. Now, this particular piece is from the Obscura to, um, the World Today collection, which is just an absolutely amazing collection. So um, Anna Maria is one of the 138 artists that are included within this collection. All the photos were shot within the same period, which was the spring of 2022. So it's just an amazing look into what was happening in different parts of the world um, during that same time period. And um, I know I've, I've done a previous podcast episode about this particular collection and the pieces I've collected collected. Um, Alpha Trilogy has collected hundreds of pieces from this particular collection. There's 13,800 pieces um, in within the entire collection. Um, but it is that's something that I absolutely love is that it gives such an amazing um, viewpoint um, of what was happening across the world um, and what so many people were seeing and experiencing within a certain amount of time. And um, 
really love Anna Marie's perspective. This piece is such a strong piece and really shows just that conviction and reminding us of what was happening during that time. Um, so really happy to have this particular piece um, represented as part of our exhibit as well. Um, and the colors in it are just so stunning. Um, the look on the gentleman's face is just amazing. And yeah, all of the aspects and textures of it are just make for a beautiful but powerful photo. So really appreciate this particular piece very much. And the next photographer that we're going to be highlighting within this part of the exhibit is Alessandro Sangrinetti. And this particular series is from her full collection called The Adventures of Ghoul and Belinda. And this is a really amazing photo series just because it was something that has taken place over um, a, a, over a two decade period and something that, Aless that Alessandra actually went back and met with these girls and really um, connected with them and was able to capture times within their life. Um, it's a really, really amazing series. And um, in these two images um, that I love that Alpha Trilogy picked these two particular pieces um, because part of the, the magic of this this story is really the fact that Alessandra was able to connect with these girls and capture them in these moments, these really um, intimate moments between of their friendship. And these girls are actually cousins and they grew up together. Um, but being able to see some of the behind the scenes and really the magic of, of their relationship as they're growing up. And so the first um, picture is called Immaculate Conception. And um, you can tell that the girls are um, interacting with one another and pretending about what their life is going to be like in the future. And the second photo um, is called Ghoul's Visit. And as you can tell, she's actually, um, the girls are seeing one another um, years later as they are grown up and she's actually expecting a baby for real this time. Um, and so it's just amazing that out of this series, these were two photos that represented their hopes and dreams changed into um, reality. So really tender moments and really amazing to be able to capture, but it's a great um a great little summary of this particular series that does um, cover quite a time period and it is represented in a photo book, um, but also you can um, view other pieces of this particular collection. Um, but the first photo is also actually from... Um, the first part of the series. So the girls are both ages nine through 13. So this is 1999 to 2004. And so in this time period, this was a time of their lives where dreams, fantasies, and fears fused seamlessly with real life day to day, which is such a perfect example of the Immaculate Conception photo. And with the um, second particular, with the second image, um, with Ghoul's visit, um, this is going to be in a second part of the series, the second chapter of their lives. And this is where the two young cousins have come to are coming of age, and they're still located in the countryside of Buenos Aires, Argentina. But also, their lives are changing. They're growing up. Um, we can see here that Belinda is expecting her first baby. Um, but just a really amazing way of capturing um, these girls' lives as they are growing up, and um, a great representation of what it is to have that childlike wonder of the world, and then growing into a adulthood. So I strongly suggest that everyone check out this collection. Um, it's just a really captivating um, storytelling collection and documenting the, particularly these two girls' lives, but also ways that we can connect with the stories that are told throughout as well. But really, really amazing collection. Um, the next collection that we are um, highlighting out of this series um, is by a photographer that, whose name is Benim Sadiga, and he is also a, um, an artist, one of the 138 artists included in the Obscura TWT collection. And this particular piece is called Surrounding Moments um, 073. And this collection is really, really interesting. Um, it really highlights the relationship that the photographer has with this particular um, island of Hingham. And it's in the description of the photo, he talks a lot about um, the, about the, the 
cultural dynamic of the island and also his relationship with that particular um, culture. And um, he, he quote, he's quoted in the description saying, there are turbulent waves between me and the island of Hingam, each referring to a brief moment. Every time they are born, I am seen to witness their disappearance. In the same way as a moment, every time I approach one, I am simultaneously moving away from it. The essence of the island and its seclusion, nothingless give space to my solitude as I am in, in its new guests to experience a touch of relief and those tranquil split seconds. And so the meaning, the name of the island is ac actually means moment um, in English, which is really quite interesting for what he's capturing here. Um, and it's a very small island um, located in the south of Iran in the Persian Gulf. Um, but it's just, again, this pic picture would have been taken in the spring of 2022. And another amazing example of how we are all moving through the world at the same time and being able to capture these moments um, by individuals um, and seeing what their life is like and being able to compare that to our own um, and how unique it is. Um, but he, I really appreciate the um, image and the voice that is shared here. Um, you can see that there's just a gentleman standing there with, um, and the conviction in his face is really, really moving. Um, but an absolutely beautiful piece. And again, very um, excited to include this particular one um, in our um, in our exhibit here. And the um, final um, image that is included in this particular set of documentary photography is created by Hans Kemp. Um, and he is known on Twitter and in different social settings as Light Chronicler. And um, this particular piece is from his work play, Eat and Pray collection, which is an ode to Asia. And I've really enjoyed getting to know Hans Kemp and his work um, from coming into the NFT space. Um, Hans has been a photographer for several decades and has several photo books um, that document the culture in Asia and really his love for these people and for these um, locations that he visits and really just the experience shine through so much in the images he captures and the words that he writes about these these. Um, adventures. And uh, this particular piece I absolutely love. Um, it's called um, WPEP, which stands for Work, Play, Eat, and Pray. And it's number 14, Enlightened. And um, the description for the piece is just wonderful. And again, reading through this the descriptions of this collection is um, how you really feel like you're captivated to this area. And also you can understand Hans's appreciation. But in, um, his description says, man warming himself by a fire in Pushkar, India. Sometimes you get lucky with a photograph. Passing by this ramshackle dwelling, I immediately notice that the beam of light descending into the man's head. His hair and beard, the bewilderment, the be bewildered look in his eyes. He could have come, he could have been a prophet from a biblical times. Of course, luck means nothing if you're not prepared for th prepared for it through practice. Lucky I was. Uh, so I just love that that, you know, oftentimes what people are able to accomplish gets referred to as luck, but there's so much more that goes into that. And um, so appreciate um, Hans being able to recognize that. But also this image is such an amazing one. And I really appreciate the beauty that Hans sees in this moment and the idea that, you know, things are not always what we see in front of us. There can be more to the story. Um, but and and Hans Kemp is also, um, his first collection in, that he released into the NFT space was in the summer of 2001, which is Bikes of Burden. And um, it actually um, sold out very quickly and has been um, really well, widely accepted and appreciated. Um, this particular collection, Work, Play, Eat and Pray, is another collection that he has released into the NFT space. Um, and really excited to see it being appreciated as well and excited for um, some of the future Future projects that Hans is working to bring into the NFT space as well. Um, and so those are the, the eight artists and the 10 photographs that we have representing our documentary um, section of our exhibit that's happening again in Venice.
Venice, Italy in conjunction with Super Chief. And um, we really are excited about being able to highlight the works and share the stories behind these images and really hope that there'll be those that are not as familiar with Web3 photography, um, but be able to connect with the different pieces that have been selected for this exhibit. Um, we are going again to be doing a series of these um, videos to be able to highlight the different scenes that are um, included in this exhibit and be able to share our voices. And so this is episode one, and there will be 11 more episodes as we highlight the different scenes that we have been including. So hope that you find found these interesting. Um, hope that you, if you do, please like and subscribe to our channel, like this video, subscribe to our channel. Let us know which um, photograph you connected with out of this series. We'd love to hear that in the comments. And also we uh, will be linking um, all of the contact details for the artists mentioned into the uh, comments below, along with a video for the exhibit so that you'll be able to see what we're going to be seeing. And if you're in the Venice, Italy area um, during the month of November, please let me know. I actually get to go visit the exhibit. So I would love to get to meet up with you in real life if that's something that is available. But again, hope you enjoyed this. We love the opportunity to be able to share for these artists and we look forward to the next episode. Thank you so much.